Here's the deep problem of free will. On the one hand, our human sense is that our actions are fully free. On the other hand, our scientific sense is that every action is determined by a prior action. What is free will? Do we have free will? That's the big question. Free will is such a big question that the John Templeton Foundation has funded a multi-year study with experts in science, philosophy, and theology. The project is called Big Questions in Free Will. It has 60 participants, four conferences, numerous experiments and papers, all to research, test, discuss, and debate free will. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth follows the project, asking the big questions in free will. Now, you have a research project, part of this big questions in free will project, that is going to use hypnosis? That's right. Uh, how's that going to work? Um, well, hypnosis is an excellent tool that is just really um, coming into its own in cognitive neuroscience. I think for a long time, it's got this sort of checkered history of <laughs> right. being part of a stage show, you know, circus act, black magic, and so science wasn't going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. And then with the advent of neuroimaging, we started to see, oh, this is a real thing. It's an altered state of consciousness. It's something that's happening in the brain that we can study scientifically mm. and utilize, mm. exploit. Mm. Because what is great about hypnosis is that you can hypnotize someone to do a behavior that would just unfold as it would normally, but they lack agency for that behavior. So they're creating it, but they don't have the feeling of authorship of that action. And we're really interested in what's that authorship feeling doing, if anything. Which is free will. Which is free will. So the basic idea with what we want to do is use hypnosis to take away this uh, conscious awareness that you're about to move and see, do you still move if, you're, if you don't know you're about to do it? And does the neural activity look the same? Mm. If nothing changes, then it suggests that becoming aware that you're about to move isn't really instrumental to your movement. If we show the opposite, that uh, it does change things, we don't really get the movement, uh, or the um, neural activity looks completely different, then it is doing something, and we need to take that into account, and maybe I need to revise my strong stance. That free will is an illusion. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Talia takes me to watch her experiment. Here. Mm -hmm. So I want you to just relax as much as possible. Get yourself in a comfortable position. Take a few deep breaths. Once the subject is hypnotized, Talia instructs her to perform actions, actions that will be triggered after she wakes up, but without the conscious feeling that she is willing those actions herself. A little later, you will watch some video clips. Each video clip will have a red arrow next to it. If the red arrow is on the right side of the video, you will squeeze the ball in your right hand. She will watch a screen and squeeze a ball when she sees an arrow. She will assume that this is an involuntary action when in fact it was implanted by the hypnosis. Remember, you'll remember nothing of what has happened until I say to you, now you can remember everything. Three, two, one. Wide awake. All right, let yourself wake up. So what was the last thing you remember before you woke up? Sitting in the chair and I, yeah, nothing else besides that. Let's go do the experiment. Now, as in the limit experiment, the subject is fitted with electrodes on her scalp and arms to measure electrical impulses in her brain and muscle movements in her arms. Like a Christmas tree. But this time, the subject is told that the electrodes on her arms will stimulate her muscles. So she will believe that her arm movements, which are really triggered by hypnotic suggestion, are not voluntary, not affected by her conscious thoughts. Electrodes are going to be just viewing some short nature videos. Um, they'll be about 20 seconds each, and then there'll be a little pause. Talia's research assistant shows me the real-time results. So in each video clip of 20 seconds, there would be one... One squeeze. So see, she just squeezed with her left arm. So that's mm -hmm. what a, a squeeze of the stress ball, that's what we want to see. So there she just moved her right arm, and so that's the muscle potential from her right arm. So what we'll be looking at is the data 
proceeding leading up right to that squeeze. Later, Talia brings the subject out of hypnosis. Now you can remember everything. Now you can remember everything. Then they reattach the electrodes and ask the subject to contract our arm muscles voluntarily to see if there is any difference when conscious decision making enters the process. After the experiment, I meet with Talia and her partner in the project, neuroscientist Peter T, to discuss and debate the results. So this is Kaylee? That's Kaylee's data. What are we looking at? Uh, well, zero is when she made a squeeze. Right. And the red line is when she made a squeeze based on, due to the post-hypnotic suggestion. And the blue line is when she made a squeeze because she decided consciously to do so. And you can see that the lines are largely overlapping. And so what's the significance of that? Well, it shows that motor action and the accompanying redness, redness potentials aren't, uh, don't require the sort of feeling of authorship, of agency, of your action. They unfold um, naturally with or without it. And how does that uh, comport with uh, each of your views of the nature of free will? <laughs> We've been doing this <laughs> for seven years. So it's, it's an old we disagree. Yeah. I think that um, it's a problem for the sense that we have that at any moment we could decide to do otherwise, that this conscious feeling of, of being sort of free agents making decisions. This is, uh, I think, a problem for that view. Peter, you disagree with that, I think. Well, I mean, I think that uh, I don't think we have, you know, proven that consciousness plays no role. We've shown that consciousness is not necessary for making a volitional or endogenous motor act. But that is not where free will lies. It lies in this totally different domain where you're trying to decide who to marry. You're trying to decide uh, whether to learn Spanish or... Although well, the question is, why do we have a feeling... I, I, I agree with you that this is relatively meaningless, but we still have a sense of when we decided to do it, why do we have it? So for, for something to be causal, it has to be um, indicative of the future, a future event. The, uh, something going on now causes something in the future, but these kinds of judgments that we're talking about, that I did it, are about what or just I've, happened. Or I've decided to do it. Yes, but these are retrospective. They're due to a comparison of what's intended or planned and what is actually being executed. Talia's and I, we've had these debates for seven years now. So ever since she came to Dartmouth, we've been duking it out. I think actually we agree. We don't agree on the definition of the term free will. That's where the disagreement Okay. What does free will mean? I think it means that I could choose otherwise in the moment. Right, and I think it means that you can choose otherwise in the future. The system can make choices now that will have an influence okay. on what will happen in the future. But is that a fundamental difference? Yes. It's a difference in kind, not just degree. What do you think? I think that, I mean, the jury's out. We just, we just don't know. I don't think that uh, there's a different kind of neural causality that, that, that plays out. The fact that we found an example where um, consciousness appears not to play a role in subsequent acts doesn't mean that consciousness does not play a role in all subsequent acts. No, granted. But it does, does demonstrate it here. Sure. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing.